A long, long time ago, when I first made the starters for the Astara region, I introduced a little sluggy boy called Everpog. Yeah, I bet you thought I was gonna say Prince Slug. Like you didn't look at the title and thumbnail of the video or something. I made it with the promise of it being a new Eevee. But that was a long time ago that I never did show the Evos I did because I hated all of them. Including Everpod, sadly. But I've grown as an artist in all ways, really, so I wanted to come back with some patch notes for version 2 of Astara with my own Eevee that covers every type. We're gonna see some new and old faces through this video, so let's just jump straight into Everpod's new look first. Originally, Everpod was a sort of awkward looking Eevee lookalike, which is fine, but I wanted to lean more into it, looking like a strange slug creature that had plenty of Eevee likeness to it, and make it a bit cuter as well. Everpod was at first just a normal type, but I wanted to cover all the types here instead of omitting Water, Dragon, and Psychic. Just because we already had Sea Slugs in Astara that covered those types in Regibranc and Emberfi. So our first patch note is that Everpod is now a normal water type. Makes more sense now that it'd live in the Fortress Reef as well. I thought it would make sense to sort of shift the back part of Everpod closer to being more of a back protrusion that looks a bit like an Eevee's tail, which made a very charming addition to it. I should preface as well that all the Evos here change Everpod's look drastically. Like these will not be convergent lookalikes of all the Eeveelutions. Which would have been cool but not what I wanted to show here with just how crazy different every sea slug looks from one another. Instead of the dopey look that Everpod originally had, now it's a certified cutie who's ready to munch down on some coral. Everpod version 2.0 The adaptation Pokemon are normal and water type. When comparing Everpod DNA to Eevees, it becomes abundantly clear that they may have been similar species in earlier times. Everpod, however, adapted to shoreline and underwater life. Everpod seems to dwell around coral reefs, especially the Fortress Reef. It has been found that these coral parts are being chewed off by Everpod, which seems to contain the necessary prerequisites for evolution. It has been shown that Everpod can evolve into almost all known types of Pokemon in various combinations. Everpod has the ability run away. So the coral found around the reef and just around Astara in general too, as stand-ins for Evo Stone's sort of. Everpod only can evolve from coral being used on it, but not stones, but stone Evos can take the appropriate coral to evolve them instead. Let's start with the strange clear coral for our Everpod entree. Ghost Rock is a great idea for a type, and when I saw this sea slug, I instantly thought of some kind of creepy tentacled monster that you'd see in a horror. But as I went along, this turned out much more cuter than what I anticipated. Which probably is a good thing for a sea slug. This ain't no Nihil Ego. I want this delightful Pokemon to be made of almost a red glass like substance and would float along in a wavy fashion with all those tentacles tipped with a sort of see through substance where you could see their spooky veins. But my biggest challenge was what I wanted for the face. I actually settled upon a face I didn't expect, but it's kind of a mischievous sort of look to it. I guess it is a pretty primo ghost-like face in the end, so it makes sense. The first draft was nice, but I did all of these very early on, so I went on to an updated version. This updated version had much clearer colors in general, opting for a vibrant red as well as giving more clear tendrils and face and two little nubby tendrils for feet. It wouldn't use them, but it made me think of Dragapult and his little feetsies, and so I was sold. This one and its name is a big fave of Designs for a Star for me. Gastropod, the clear Pokemon, a ghost and rock type, evolves from Everpod with the clear coral. Gastropod has a body made of a glass-like substance that allows its innards to be seen, and the refraction of light enables it to turn almost fully invisible. They enjoy scaring others, but also have a kind side and will usually try to comfort anyone who becomes too upset from the fright. Gastropod carries its young around in its back tentacles for protection. Physical based attacks are usually quite effective against Gastropod, often causing cracks in its body. Gastropod have the abilities Clear Body and Limber. Our next one is the Dark and Poison type. 
Surprisingly, this one went from one of my most hated designs to my favorites. The sea slug in question here gave me such radioactive vibes when I saw it, I immediately went hard on a sort of Frankenstein hazmat sea slug. As if a hazmat suited person walked into some radioactive waste and came out all warped and covered in glowing pustules. But the idea, while interesting, was a bit tame, and so I opted to give it some asymmetry, and you'll see in the updated version I go even harder there. Frankenpod would always have one longer limb, and it's kind of endearing. My big brain thought it'd be fun to give it some back bling like the actual sea slug, but have it coming off like radio waves. I wasn't the happiest with how the original looks, the whole stitched up looking mouth and all that came off wrong, and so let's get it updated. In the updated version, I opted to keep the whole hazmat suit idea, but now instead of the eyes being kind of awkwardly placed within the screen stand, they now sit under with one eye being covered by a radioactive pustule. The second version turned out so much better and the sheer personality this one has, and just very pleased with how it turned out. They look like a chill dude, but also a Pokemon with a bit of sass and violence behind them. Frankenpod. The radioactive Pokemon, a dark and poison type, evolves from Evapod with the warped coral. Despite their appearance, Frankenpod are kind Pokemon who protect their home reef with ferocity. Their bodies constantly exude radioactive energy that can weaken and damage enemies. Almost all Frankenpod have limbs of differing sizes that they can stretch and maneuver. Many of them get their bodies stuck in awkward positions, living their lives with comically sized limbs. As they age, glowing nodules crop up all over their bodies, sometimes impairing their eyesight or movement. Frank and Pod have the abilities Poison Touch and Overcoat. This one is a bit of a bizarro one. Ground Fairy was the type combo here, and I chose this sea slug for it because it kind of gives me sort of a maid or like feather duster vibes. And I thought the idea of a little maid sea slug who kind of sweeps up the particles, but also eats them too, giving it the ground type was endearing in a way. The shape for this one stays consistent between signs, opting for this sort of quadrupedal, almost like some kind of vacuum cleaner look. You know that our little sea slug here would get tidy up as a move immediately upon evolution, and would probably make a great support mon with a bunch of other handy moves. Very much a sort of indeedy type Pokemon in that regards. The redesign didn't bring much in terms of massive changes here, just some shape design and some tweaks to the face. The more I look back between the two designs, the more I feel I've really grown as an artist, doing these Pokemon designs and really focusing hard on shape and color design. Sweptopod, the cleanly Pokemon, a ground and fairy type, evolves from Everpod with the clean coral. As cleaners of the reef, Sweptopod use their long tendril protrusions on their back to collect and eat any particulates they might find. They have a squishy body that can easily slip into the tightest areas, allowing them to ensure every space is as clean as possible. In battle, this ability helps them evade their opponents. Their life of cleaning and eating almost anything has given them a tolerance to poisons and grimy environments. Sweptopod have the abilities Cute Charm and Immunity, This next one I could comfortably say is the closest I've ever gotten to just straight up creating a Lilo and Stitch experiment character. This was not intentional, mind you. I literally just saw this sea slug in all of its orange glory and wanted to make a punchy little guy. And the direction it took was kind of just wild. I chose Steel and Fighting type for this one. The black and grey has complemented the orange very well and the way its body is set up just made me think of a little fighter and, you know, the grey is Steel type. It works. While I liked the original, I wanted more, more little guy energy, and so I went further, I pushed the pose through it, and gave it even more of a goomy-like mouth, and gave it a sort of scrappier expression. Originally it had a bit of Pikachu energy to it, and I pushed it a little bit further away in the finalized version. It's probably just the years that made it like that, but oh well. I think this one is delightful and uh, just a little bit Disney. Poundapod. The Power Punch Pokemon of the Steel and Fighting type evolves from Everpod with the Steel Ball Coral. Poundapod leave their reef quickly after evolving and embark on a journey of discovery as they perfect their fighting style by battling stronger opponents. Their squishy bodies can harden at their extremities, 
and even inflate to create larger steel boxing gloves to strike foes. If they anticipate an incoming hit, they can do the same to their midsection to soften the blow. They are a cocky Pokemon that hates to be criticized, and could easily be thrown into fits of rage. Powderpot have the abilities Iron Fist and Long Reach. The Leafy Sheep Sea Slug is a crowd favorite for their cute looks and floppy exterior, only being beaten out by the Sea Bunny. Do you have a favorite type of Sea Slug? Comment below what it is so I can look at it and be happy again. Grass Electric type for this one is the idea of a literal Leafy Sea Slug who uses photosynthesis to get electrical energy was too good to pass up. And making it vaguely sheep shaped would go off just a treat. I wanted this one to have a massive leafy body with glowing spots and light up during attacks, leaving, <laughs> leaving, only some little white leggies and a shocked face down below. In the second version, it was more just a change in pose, adding a few extra tidbits to the detail of the design and giving it more of an eerie face. The face of someone who is shocked there is a human managing to swim underwater for this long and trying to capture them. You know, we'll tell them that uh, was it, Chilean wine is out of season and that their taste in wine in general is very poor. No, that's, we gotta be more subtle than that. Synthopod. The photosynthesis Pokemon, a grass and electric type, evolves from Everpod with the leafy coral. Synthopod live high up on the reef where their plate-like bodies absorb the energy of the sun. They have almost no need to eat and derive all they need from this power. When they are fully charged, their bodies begin to glow, and their tails flicker violently, giving them bursts of energy to result in zoomies and attacking anything they deem a threat. Where they sleep, they hide among the seaweed, where nothing will notice them. Symphopod have the abilities Chlorophyll and Motor Drive. Bug flying was next with Dino, oh, it's a bit of an overused typing, but when I saw this sea slug, it evoked something within me. The idea that this part on his back wasn't just like a little bobble thing, but an actual balloon that could inflate the black parts underneath, kind of being the rubber part of the body, capable of inflating, and so it all came together from here. Then being called sea slug slides into kind of being a bug type in itself, with the idea of slugs and snails being very buggy in Pokemon, even if they technically aren't in real life. And the green color this sea slug has evokes very bug type looks. So I made this almost weird cat, stunky looking face with a little bum looking mouth, is floating along or even looking like it's about to dive bomb something with its big balloon back. It doesn't look very menacing, almost too cute to go with the rest of the sea slugs, but I thought that'd be part of the fun. Have this smaller, meeker looking sea slug Evo, but this one is actually a bit of a menace in battle. The original's design had kind of a weird look to it and the balloon part kinda looked like a butt wearing some too tight undies, so I restarted it and tried a different approach, making the head much smaller and the balloon and propeller tails giant to really show that flying type part of the design. Again, I think this new version of it sells the typing much better than the other one, while still giving it the sea slug vibes. Hoverpod, the balloon Pokemon, a bug and flying type, evolves from Everpod with the Skitter Coral. Hoverpod live out of the water, where they hunt other bug types to eat. They have adapted a tail that acts as a propeller, along with a large bulb on their back that can be inflated by taking in air, functioning like a balloon. Some Pokemon find delight in batting Hoverpod around like a ball, which infuriates them. In response, Hoverpod will lash out by expelling all of its air, setting itself and its opponent flying. Hoverpod are incredibly slow unless they are using their tails to fly along. Hoverpod have the abilities Propeller Tail and Hustle. Fire and Ice type was next and the colors on this one kind of just made me feel that typing a sort of mix of fiery reds and cool blues with their purple, it just writes itself really. I wanted to make this one very demure looking, a sort of God of War feeling one where it looks quite kind but will just totally destroy you if you try anything funny. I wanted a bipedal design here, make it feel sort of like an alien in a ways, but the main focus of this was for that mixing of fire and ice to come together as a sort of steam-like plume that would come off the Pokemon. In the initial design I went through some different styles but all of them fell off and kind of ugly. The new version I kept some of the ideas like the steam coming off the arms and the eyelash parts but 
Most of it has changed for the better. Less back parts instead becoming a sort of coattail, the glowing red hot greeblies, with the smoke now becoming more of a shoulder and back part. A bit of a fashion accessory there, imagine when needed could plume that out much further. Overall, the new design just destroys the other two in looks and believability to be in the game as well. Aurora Pod, the dry ice Pokemon and ice and fire type. Evolves from Everpod with the chilly coral. Aurora Pod usually live in colder waters due to their body's strange temperature variations, which lead to steam constantly rolling off them. This steam can be controlled to create attacks or smoke screens. During moonlit nights, Aurora Pod can be seen skating across the ice with one another. Many theorize that this is a form of communication among Aurora Pod. Due to rising water temperatures, Aurora Pod are seen less and less around Astara. Aurora Pod have the abilities White Smoke and Ice Body. Don't call it a comeback, he was always here! A while back I made my first Convergent Pokemon video. There were some decent designs there, but none more so than Gastragon. A dragon and psychic type, and one that just conveniently is the last two types we need. Initially, Gastrogon wasn't going to be in the Astara decks, but he found a way. He got his passport and snuck in under the guise of an Everpod Evo. But the design was a little too close to Gastrodon to be a proper Everpod Evo, so it's redesign time. Normally with these, I give the design more details, as back then I'd very much designed with a lack of detail, but here I actually <laughs> removed some to make it more appealing. It's strange, right? I decided to have the detail way much further in the head now, and partially the wings, with the rest of the design more of a rest area for the eyes. And I think it works much better that way. Besides, this thing hypnotizes you with shifting wings and head patterns, so why would you want to look at the rest of the body? I usually don't come back and redesign mods that often, especially if they're already out there in the internetosphere, yeah, but I was happy to come back to Gastrogon. So welcome back, Gastrogon, and more so, welcome to a star, baby! Dragapod, the Patterns Pokemon, a dragon psychic type, evolves from Everpod with the Ringed Coral. The strange evolution of Everpod, Dragapod resembles the Pokemon Gastrodon, although any relation beyond appearance is unknown. Their bodies have various patterns that shift and grow, controlled by Dragapod. They use these patterns to transfix and captivate foes until Dragapon is close enough to chomp down on them. Their wing-like membranes primarily create spectacular patterns and illusions to confuse enemies. Dragapod have the abilities Intimidate and Psychic Surge. So with that little bit of fixing up for the Astara decks and little patch notes, we'll now return to our regularly scheduled programming and head off to the Ultra Snowfields in the Ultra Convergence. Perhaps with a new Everpod Evo on your team? Comment down below what your fave design of the video was and if any are going on your Astaran team. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it's free and helps my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And Meatwad needs to learn some morals and values. Look at him and tell me there's a god. Be made me in his own image.